tutorial on this. A rectangle pull card in which Rocky doffs his cap. This is my cutesy card for the February 2015 Designer Challenge. You can go over to the blog post. It is linked in the About section if you'd like to see all of the cards for this month's challenge. My card base is a piece of white cardstock. It's 8 inches wide, it's 6 inches tall, it's been scored in the middle for folding. And then what I did is I cut two pieces of pattern paper that were just a little bit smaller than each side so that I would get that little white border. For the piece on the right half of the card, it can just be pressed down permanently. So I've added my tape runner all over the back of that paper. I'll just center it in there so that I get that nice little white border and press it down. For the panel for the left hand side of the card, I only want to use my adhesive on the outside edges and I do not want to put any adhesive on the edge that will end up inside the interior fold. I'll show you why in just a second, but I just want some adhesive around the outside and then I can go ahead and press that down as well. The reason for that is I'm going to need to put some transparency between the layers for my window pane, so I want to make sure that I can still stick my hand in between the papers on that inside edge. I'm going to use the rectangle pull card die. Now I can use any machine I want. I'm in the Sizzix Big Shot on a magnetic platform with a cutting pad. I've got those little alignment nubs that allow me to line it up over the fold of the card. Anywhere along the fold, what I want to do is look at the rectangle portion of the die so to make sure that that's centered top to bottom in the card because that's really what I want. So I want to have that in the center. Then I'll just put my cutting pad on top, roll that right through the machine. I've got my die in place on the paper with some temporary removable tape and before I would remove the die I just want to check on the back and make sure that it did die cut through both layers. It did a beautiful job, no problem, so now I'm going to go ahead and remove the die. So let's take a look at what we've got here. On that left side of the card I am still able to get between the two layers on the rectangle area and that's going to be perfect for me to add my window pane. Now before I can put in a window pane, I'm going to need a window. So I'm going to grab the rectangle decorator die that comes with the rectangle pull card. Now it is sized to where you can nest it in and cut it at the same time. And the only reason I didn't do that is because I decided I don't want to cut this entire rectangle. So let me just cut, tape this down using my scotch removable tape, turn it over, I'll show you. Look at those cool little Polaroid frames. That's the look that I wanted for my window. I wanted the rectangle not to cut all the way down to the bottom so that I can make a little bit thicker white border on the bottom edge and it will mirror the look of those Polaroid frames. Sizzix sells these great on the edge cutting pads. They're one of my favorite little tools for doing things like this partial die cutting. I only want to cover the top portion of the rectangle so that I can leave that little bit thicker border along the bottom. So you can see all it's done is it's cut three sides of the rectangle. It didn't cut the bottom because there was no cutting pad over the top of that. And then all I'll do to finish out the window is just use the Elizabeth Craft Designs detail scissors and just cut straight across to make the bottom edge of that window. Okay, I've cut the window out of the card. You can see how it looks now. All I have to do to train it is just fold the card in half like a normal card and then back fold right around that rectangle. And there's been some little partial score lines that were made by the die to make it easy to do that. The other nice thing about the rectangle pull card is it has this little tuck slot at the top and that's what will hold your card closed for you so that you don't get an accidental reveal. Now that's pretty thick, it's got cardstock, it's got pretty thick pattern paper so I might just go ahead and use my brayer to kind of mash down the folds a little bit. Now what can you use for a window pane? Basically anything clear. It could be a printer transparency or a bit of dye packaging. And I've used some Elizabeth Craft Designs thin adhesive around the outside. What size? Just measure your opening. You can see my ruler there. All I did is just measure the size of that rectangle and cut it with a trimmer. I didn't use a die for that. And then I just need to slide that in until it's under the opening. And since I've used that really thin tape, it'll hold it down real nice. Now, right now, that, tr that transparency is only attached to one half of the opening. So what I need to do is just get in there now with some additional tape and tape down the rest of it. So that's just a fun way to make a little window card out of the rectangle pull card. You can think of lots of things that you could put behind that window where if it's attached to the spinner, then you get to see it in the closed position and you get to see it when you open it. And so what we need to do now is we need to make a really cool Rocky the Crab. Rocky the Crab is one of the newest character dies, and the way these work is there's a detail layer die and a shadow layer die. And to make an articulated Rocky, where the brads are going to let his arms move, I need two sh detail layers, one just to cut the arms and one for his other parts. Now when I cut those arms, I'm going to leave a little material out on the end. So there's a little bit of his claw attached to one end and a little bit of his body attached to the other. 
that's what's going to give me a little space to be able to attach the brads. So you can see I'm just using the detail scissors, I'm going in, snipping out his arms, but leaving a little material on both ends. The characters also come with shadow layers, and that's what gives you that little line drawing look around the outside, and all of the details end up with their color based on the shadow layers shining through. Now when I add the glue, I want to make sure that I'm adding it just to the arm itself. I'm not putting any glue out on the extra areas that I've left attached to the red. So remember the red has a little bit of claw and a little bit of body attached to the ends. I don't want any adhesive between those two layers. Then I'm going to take my detail scissors and I'm just going to go ahead and snip around the ends of those arms so that they have a little shadow as well. and shadow layer number one, you get some little shadowed arms. The rest of Rocky can come from the other detail layer. I'm going to chop off the claws and I'll add those to the shadow layer. So just a little bit of glue, get those in there where they have that little perfect shadow. And then for his body, I'll use the same piece. I'm just going to chop off his arms and then add some glue behind it and add it to that same shadow layer. I love my fine line bottle and my Lineco pH neutral adhesive and mainly because it dries clear. So even if my glue squishes out a little bit, it will dry clear. Okay, I've taken my scissors and chopped out the black parts that were the arms. So now I've separated the claws from the body from the arms and then I can just add his little eyeball. So that's a dye that comes with Rocky. Okay, I've zoomed in a little closer so you can watch me do this. What I want to do is take those arm pieces and remember that I didn't use adhesive out on the ends. That way I can slide the red over the red and let the black go behind the black. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. I'm just going to separate the two layers so that the red goes on top of the red and the black goes behind the black. And then what's going to connect those to each other is going to be a red brad. So I'll just use a paper piercer, pierce down through the whole thing, and add some little brads. Now with the claws, I'm not going to separate any layers. I'm just going to put the claw right over the top of the arm and use the brad to connect the two. And I do just want to make sure when I'm adding the brads that I'm not making them so tight that the arms don't want to move because I still want to be able to kind of wiggle these things back and forth a little bit after the brads get in. And you can just check that and make sure that all of the little joints are moving pretty easily. Another thing that you can do if you find that as you move them that the little brad prongs stick out the back is you can take a pair of wire snips or needle nose pliers and just go in and snip a little bit of the prong so that they're shorter and that way they won't be visible as you move the claws. You won't see the little prongs of the brad sticking out from behind there. And like I say, just make sure that they're not too tight. Okay, Rocky needs some props. I've used the Props 1 die set and I've cut a pair of teal spectacles. So those have been glued on his little face there. And then with the hat die, I cut it out of black, but then I also cut a second one out of the teal so that I could just cut the hat band out of it. So I just hand cut that and glued it over the top. One of the dies that comes included with the rectangle pull card is the optional spinner die. So this is quite a fun little die. It creates motion inside the card. Whatever you add to the spinner is going to move when the card is opened. So you start by just finding the score lines in the piece. There are three score lines, and once you've found those, that'll help you with the adhesive because you want to make sure that you don't cross that score line with your adhesive when you're adding some tape to your outside panels. When you fold the spinner up the middle, you'll see that the two sides line up over the top of each other. There's an angled end, and that angle goes anywhere into that fold on the card, anywhere that you would like it to go. For my card today, I'm actually going to start by working on the left side of the fold because I want to make sure I go high enough to where that entire panel that has the adhesive on it is higher than the window. I don't want to see that stuck down panel through the window because the adhesive would be unsightly. So I'm just going to put it high enough to where that little corner just touches the window but doesn't cross into it. Then I'll just peel up the adhesive on the other side, hold that thing flat while I close the card against the exposed adhesive to attach the spinner to the other side of the fold. When the card opens, that little mountain is just going to come up. Anything that gets attached to the spinner will move when the card is opened and closed. Okay, I'm going to end up using it for the hat. First thing I need to do is I need to get Rocky to hold his hat. So I'm going to add a little bit of adhesive to, I guess it's his right on your left claw so that he can hold his hat over his head. 
And for placement, what I'd like to do is collapse his hand down, his little claw down, to where I can get that hat as low and as straight as possible. That's going to be the closed position. The next step is going to be to attach the hat to the spinner. So what I'll use for that are some small glue dots. I want them on the left side of the spinner, so the left side of the fold, but up near the fold. Once I've got my glue dots on there, then I can partially close the card. I don't want to just squish the card closed because I've got exposed adhesive. But I want to be able to get in there in the closed position and choose a location for the hat where I like it, where it's going to be straight when the card is closed, where it's going to be kind of centered in the window opening, and just get the hat in a position that you like. Now you'll see what happens when you open the card. The spinner's going to pull that hat up. Right now it's also pulling Rocky, but at least it's doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing with the hat. What I'm going to do to anchor Rocky is I'm going to put the brad that's right now just through his body, I'm going to put it through the whole card. So in the closed position, I take a look at approximately where that brad lands and then move him out of the way. And then I'm going to punch a hole right through the whole card. And that way, once I put that little brad through, the one that's right now just going through his body, I'll get that through the whole card. And that will anchor him so that it'll make his little arms and body start moving on the brads rather than just spinning up with the hat. Once I get the brad prongs through the card and then opened up on the back of the card, then now Rocky is anchored and the fun stuff is going to start happening. Now the opening and the closing of the card creates a really fun motion. The spinner pulls the hat up and because of the little brads on his arms and his little body, he can spin, his little claws can spin. You can have fun positioning his other little claw at whatever angle you would like. Maybe he's going to be holding something. There's lots of fun things you can do with this. I designed the rectangle accordion to coordinate nicely with the rectangle pull card as far as the accessory dies. Now the rectangle accordion comes with this cool speech bubble die with the stitch lines in it and the little script word hello, and it's sized to fit perfectly on either the accordion or the pull card. But of course, as I look at it, I really don't want to obscure my hat. I'd much rather put that inside the card, and I wish I would have thought to do it before I added my spinner, because now the spinner's in the way, so I'll just, it's easy enough, but I will have to cut a little notch out of the speech bubble so that I can get in there and get it around the spinner, and if I need to adjust the notch, then I will. I just kind of took a guess at first, and then I noticed, okay, I need to extend it just a little bit. And you're not going to see that little notch. It's going to be hidden inside the card, but... Had I put the speech bubble on first, I wouldn't have had to make that adjustment, but I didn't know I wanted it, so I'm just going to add it afterwards. And the reason I thought that would be a cool place for it is because in the closed position, his hat and the frame kind of obscure the word hello, but then when he doffs his cap, you can read his little greeting. Now there are lots of little embellishment dies that come with the rectangle pull card. I also used the heart from the rectangle accordion, the little lips from Props 1. So just the same die sets I was using, I just went to their decorator dies to make all of the additional embellishments for my card. And the tuck slot keeps it closed until I'm ready to pull it open. When the card is folded up, it measures 5 inches wide by 6 inches long. That'll fit nicely in an A7 envelope and it should mail for a single stamp. I would love it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel and like my Facebook page, Karen Berniston Designer. You can check the About section for a link to the blog post for a supply list. You can go to ecraftdesigns.com to peruse all the pop-it-up styes, and you can always find more ideas on my blog, KarenBerniston.com. Thanks for watching.